record. Type through and panels. Let's go back. All right, everyone. Welcome to this analysis seminar. It's a pleasure to have today Cristina Ogenesian from the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. She's going to be talking to us today about on the number of lower sets with the fixed cardinality. Cristina, pleasure to have you here. Thank you very, first of all, thank you very much for uh, organizing this visit and for everyone who was enrolled in this. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, let's start with this, uh, just with the definition of integer partitions. So what is this? We have a natural number and then its representation as a sum of non-increasing positive integers is called a, an integer partition of n. So let's just consider some example. Let's say n be, I don't know, 18. And let us decompose it by like, seven plus four plus three plus two plus one and one. So it is a integer partition of eighteen, and we can represent it also via the so-called Young diagram. How do we do this? So we just draw this. Uh, this staircase actually so the first layer will have seven cells here one two three four five six seven the next one is four then you have three two one one so this staircase is actually called the young diagram and this is a representation of this in the partition okay it's easy to see that any integer partition can be drawn in this way, and vice versa. If we have a young diagram, we can recover the partition. So the, the important thing is that every layer here must go smaller and smaller. Okay, so we know a lot of things about this uh, integer partitions. First of all, we know the generating function. But if you stop to think a little bit, you can uh, find this very nature. And you can understand why it's the generating function. And we know, so yeah, I didn't say that P2 of M is the number of integer partitions of M. I think I will say something about this too on the next slide. For now, just P2. <laughs> and we know the asymptotic. So by Harin Ramanujan, we know that P2 of M is, well, the main part is, is the exponent squared of M times some. Constant. Okay, now we go further and we have these play partitions. So basically it's the same, but now every term in the sum has two indexes and you require this monotonicity in two directions. And we will see a, an example. So uh, how should we understand this? Let's, let's stop here a little bit. So we have M I J and let us think that I will stay for the say the green axis here and J will be the red one and then the value of N I J will be the, the blue S okay so what do we see okay M11 what is this so the, the, the very high column here is Three cubes, right? The very beginning. So we have n one one is is three. But then okay, we we fix uh, the the green axis and we go along the, the red one. So what we have? The next thing is two, right? Two cubes. So n one two is two. Then you have one and then one more one. Oops. So we have n one three is one. And one four is one. Oops. Okay, then we move further on this green axis and we have two one one, right? Oops. And one and two one is two, and two two is one, and two three is one. The next one is just this 
two, two and one. So M three one is two, M three two is one, and the last one is M four one, it's one. So we we recovered this uh, plane partition uh, from this figure here. So you can also know that if you just say, okay, let be the, the green axis be the axis of values, then you still have a plane partition, right? But another one, but it's still a plane partition, okay? And also that's what is important. What happens if you just choose an axis you want and you slice your set, what do you obtain? Well, basically, okay. If you fix one here, the first coordinate, you have a young diagonal, right? So you have three, then two. Uh, oh, no, I'm going to put the one thing, right? Get one here, three, then two, then one, one. It is an integer partition, right? So every slice you get is an integer partition itself. And every next slice is smaller than the previous one and it's containing it, right? So these are things that we have to understand before we do anything. And okay, we know also the generating function here in this way. And we also know the assembly process. So here the main part is exponent of n to the power two thirds and some constant. So, so we don't have a D, uh, dimensional definition, but we already can make some conjectures about the growth of this, um, for this value. Okay, let, let's give the, the definition. So D dimensional partition is basically when you have D indices uh, for every term, and you require this monotonicity in each of these D directions here. Okay, you can ask me what about generating function? Okay, so far nothing. So there was a conjecture made by McMahon. So you see here, my minus k here. In the previous case, there was minus one. So his idea was that the, the right thing to put here is like binomial coefficient, uh, depending on this d. And so it was staying as a conjecture for quite a long time. But then it was proved that it's the wrong thing, even for the case four. And however, there are some numerics that show that probably the order is the right one, but nothing more. So, okay, we don't know anything about this, uh, about the generating function. And, okay, now what is a lower set? Because my title was lower set. It is actually the visualization of this partition. So in one dimensional case, when the partition was one dimensional, we have this two-dimensional picture here. The case of plane partitions, like two-dimensional partitions, we had a this. Okay, yeah, we have this three-dimensional picture figure. Okay, so now this two in P of M stands for the dimension of this young diagram, and then in the case of three, it's the dimension of this figure here. So D will stand for this, the dimension of visualization, okay? But we didn't uh, define this formula yet. Let us do this. <laughs> so what is a lower set? It's basically uh, a set Q in Z plus B. How do we define it? So if a sub x belongs to Q, then any other point which have which has all the coordinates less or equal than that of x must belong to our set also. So it's lower set. If you have this x belong to Q, then any x prime that is that xi less than xi here. Both sides, then you must have x prime in your set also. Okay, so how do we understand this? So, in this two dimensional case, we saw the staircase here, 
And the, the definition from the beginning was like, I have every layer here less and less and less, but I can define it differently. If I cube here, the cell here, in my set, then all the, all the cubes in this rectangle are being my set also. That will be equivalent, okay? So then I define this uh, lower sets and I will work with them and not uh, with the partitions, okay? This will be more convenient. So yeah, you can see that uh, you can think of points and you also can think of cubes like this. So, I mean, it's difficult to, to understand like D for high uh, values of D, but you, you can think like you have, you can draw this hyperplanes, the coordinate hyperplanes, and then every cube, every unit cube you have in your set, is either touching another one in each direction, or touch the, the wall, the, the hyper, hyperplane is, okay? So that's the concept. And yeah, so now D has the right to stay here because it's the, the dimension of this, uh, this lower sets, okay? So D dimensional lower sets correspond to D minus one dimensional partitions, okay? Okay, we are interested in this number. Okay, why? Well, first of all, this, the this structure of lower sets surprisingly it appears in a lot of uh, physical settings like crystal grows and the microstates of the gas part particle in this harmonic oscillators. <laughs> I'm not specialist in this case, but the, the thing is that this quantity usually appears in physical context. But okay, there are some things you can do. Uh, we can apply this in mathematics also, in approximation theory at least. So if you have, uh, sometimes it's good to approximate some function by uh, trigonometric polynomials, and it makes sense that the harmonics of your polynomials stay in the lower set. But just by some observation, you can, you can understand that if you have some harmonic here, you should have all the harmonics we need, okay? So yeah. What do we know about this PD of N? First of all, we know this theorem by Batia, Prasad, and Aron, which was also proved in physical, in physical work. So uh, if you fix the dimension when you leave, then you just see that your logarithm of PD of N is F up to a constant and to the power one minus one over T. So that's what we saw in this two-dimensional case, three-dimensional case, right? So this is the right thing. However, they didn't care about the constant at all. So, and at least for applications, it is not very good. And for the purposes, so dietary max, shot, and zircon, they provided some explicit values for this constant. So, you, first of all, you can say that this thing here, you always can think of it as constant to the power d to the power lower d. And uh, if you assume that your n is large enough, say it's a constant to the power of d, then this c1, you can think of it as a, a constant action, because when you, when you write this thing down, you can understand that it's, well, at least one, always. So then you, you, you are uh, okay with this uh, lower constant here. So you can think of it as a constant, because usually for applications, not always, but usually you have M uh, being large enough in terms of the, okay. But the problem is this C2, which is quite huge value here. So the main results um, I will be talking today is this one. So once you have like M being D to the power of the squared, you can just uh, obtain that your logarithm of PG is up to an absolute constant n to the power of one minus one over d. And if for some reasons you want to release this condition to d to the power d over d, then you can put here additional d squared. Okay, so I will tell some things about the ideas of the proof. And we will need to introduce a notion of available subset or lower set. So what is it? Let's draw something here to dimensional ones here. Yeah. Please. Yes. 
we will call a puke available if we can take it away without like disturbing the, the lower set structure. So if I take this cube away, the remaining set will be lower set. Okay. So this is this cube is available. This is not available because if I take it away, I'll get a hole. I can't get a hole. So actually in this set we have just one, two, three cubes available. Right? So this set I will call the maximum available subset of this uh, Q. And uh, it's the definition. And uh, M of Q will be the maximum available subset of Q. Okay? So this is M of Q. So now we'll be interested in, in interested in the uh, in estimating this point. And uh, the dilemma we can obtain is that if you have n large enough like d to the power d log d, and if you have a lower set with cardinality n, then we can see that the cardinality of this uh, available subset is at most some absolute constant times n to the power one minus one over d. Actually, this is what we would expect. Why? So imagine you have a very strange lower set, like very long here, very long here, I don't know, something here. We would expect it to have a, a big available subset. No, right? You can take away these cubes and put them somehow here, and you will get much more. Uh, flexibility here, right? So the intuition is uh, you should uniformize your lower set to get this uh, available subset um, more, right? And then, well, which sets are the most uniform possible? Okay, this one, right? If I take this set or this set or this set, right? So actually what 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 these sets are. So I have x in my q if and only if the sum of its coordinate is less or equal than some prescribed number. So eight, yes. Right? And if you stay uh, thinking and calculating, you will see that these sets have exactly exactly this, I mean up to some absolute constant, they have this uh, available subsets. Okay, now we will not prove the lemma, but I suggest us to prove something uh, weaker. Actually, not weaker because in the previous thing we had this requirement that n must be large, but now we, without assuming anything on d and n, we will prove that it's less than uh, d times n to the power one minus one over d. Okay, okay we will do this. By induction on the dimension. Once again, we start with this uh, two dimensional case. Good one. Okay, I have some Q in two dimensional case. I claim that we always have, if I have a point x2, x1, x2, then there must hold also either this. X1 might be small, it will be higher. This or X2 might be small. Okay, if not, then I have a point here, which is this one. Right? And I must have all the points beneath. So I already have points from zero, one, where of n, the first coordinate and the second one the same. So I have at least this number of cubes in my set. Right? It's not possible. So okay, I have either this or that. This means I can put my set into these two straps in the union. And let me call this part which belongs to this track 
to one, and the other one will be B2. So you can think that you can see that these two sets are lower sets, right? Because you just cut apart the weight. And that's that's all. So you have Q belongs to the linear of Q1 and Q2. And the same you can say about the available subsets, right? If it's available here, it must be available here and here, right? So Right. Yeah, this. Union. And then the, the, the cardinality of this guy is less than the sum of cardinalities here. But what can I say about this guy here? It has the first coordinate being either one or uh, either zero or one or two of these numbers. And note that I cannot take away two cubes which are with the same first coordinate. Because one of these, one of them is beneath, and then they're, they're ordered. So there will be a hole. So the maximum value of this guy is square root of m. Right? And here the same. So I have that the, the, the cardinal of the whole guy is at not 2 square root of m. And that's what I want. Okay, now I need to proceed by induction somehow. And so let me get back to the picture then. So remember, we noticed that we can slice our set so that it became, became this, every slice is the lower set uh, itself. And then each next slice is a subset of the previous one. Okay, now what I do, I will choose an axis I want, I will slice my set, and I will get slices from quite a like n0, and n1, and so on, to some, say, nm. Okay? Okay, for each slice, I can do something. For example, I can use the induction assumption to get an OK step. What do I have? I have, there was this. We are proving this, right? But now what I have with d minus one instead of d is this thing. Okay. But also remember that if I have this scale level, and then I have k plus one. So this is a subset here, and it uh, belongs like it lies above this guy. So if I take here away a cube, which also belong here, there will be a hole. Okay? So I cannot do that. So that also I must have at most this, <laughs> this number of cubes. Okay, I have two two estimates. This one from the induction and this one just from uh, general reasons. Okay, now I can write the M of Q is at most the sum of K from zero to M, just for, for the sake of simplicity, let's think that M plus one with zero. And here I have minimum for the first guy here. And this difference. Now I will break this sum into two parts. So the first part uh, will go from zero to this number, like m to the power one over d minus one. And I will use the first estimate here. This. And the next sum, this just telescopic, okay? I will just use this. And I will get M with this, with this in this. Okay, what can I say about this? This is a slice of number M to the power one over D, and it's less than M zero, it's less than M one, and two, and so on. So 
At most, this can be n divided by the uh, this number, right? So it's the, the least in the among all first n to the power one over d slices. Okay, and this, what can I do? The sum of, of, of n case is at most n. <laughs> and this power is less than one, so the maximum is when all they are the same. So I have n to the power one over d things here, and I have this way. I will not deal with the four function here because it's boring, but what we get is this thing, and it's exactly what we want. So we have one here and d minus one here. And we get what we want, okay? Okay, so we wrote some uh, simple version of the lemma. And it's recorded in our original lemma, we had not D, but a, an absolute constant here. Okay, so if we denote this Tn being the maximal cardinality of available subsets of all sets of cardinality n, then when n is large enough, we have this as And then what can we do? We can estimate the, the number of lower subset of a set. So if we know the, the number of cubes we will take away from this set, so if the original set was with cardinal n, and then we take away at most k cubes. And the question is, how many lower subsets we can get? So this is an estimate for this number, which depends on this T of n, which was the uh, the cardinality of available subset. Then we uh, plug in these estimates and we get some, something like this. But let me give an, an intuition how to do this. So I have a lower set, once again, let me two dimensional. And I have it, it's lower subset, just for the sake of clarity, let it be like this, okay? A and B, and it's a subset. I want to come from A to B, discarding some cubes here. Uh, step by step, but not one by one. So how can I do this? I will mark all the available cubes. So here I have this one, this one, this one, this one. And I will see which ones I can take away and which ones must stay to form B after that. Okay, so this one must stay. I will not touch it. And this one also. But these two I can remove. So I remove this one, this one, and I came to some A prime. So once again, I will see the available subset. This cube, this cube, and this two cubes. So these two cubes must stay forever, so I will never touch them, but they are participating in my available subset always. So okay, I will remove this one and this one, and then once again, I will see the available subset, this one and this one, I will discard them, and finally I will discard this cube, and I will count to B. So basically, if I know the number of cubes I want to remove, and if I know the cardinality of this maximal available subsets on which step, and I also remember that these uh, two cubes, they, they give some value, additional value in, into this cardinality of available subset, but they are never touched. So if I take this all these things into account, I can do something here and prove the, 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 the lemma. Okay. okay, basically then the idea is to split your initial lower set into some tricky way into different lower subsets to apply this estimate on this one and the level one. After that, but I will not enter into details here. So this is uh, about the, this theorem, but now uh, 
I'd like to say change a little bit the subtopic. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about high dimensional level sets. So remember here we had like and the constant to the power of d, and sometimes like d to the power of d squared, okay? Forget about this. Now I don't know anything about the relations between n and t. So what can I say from, from not, I can say this. So this is a, the theorem by Cohen, Miller, and Novin. They say that every in every case you have p of n, Let's ripple down to the power to uh, two to the power dn, and in a, an independent estimate, which is d to the power n minus one, n minus one for forever. Okay, so it turns out that the the second estimate can be refined. It was done by Dietrich, Mark, Shalvin, Tichon, and Zirko. So you can just describe this n minus one factorial, which is let's do it here. And now just and you put this when I will confusion on the left hand side. But now just for the sake of curiosity, you have if you assume that you fix the cardinality of your set and you just vary the dimension when you where you live, then d to the power n minus one is the right thing. Because this n minus one factorial is just constant in this case. So but but that's uh this case is not um Reasonable, but I mean, if you assume this, you have the, the right order. So now we will talk about the case that actually D is quite big. So at least M divided by some power of lower of M. And we have some estimate in this case. So first of all, this is the very, very unnatural case <coughs> when D is greater than M cubed. Then you have super sharp estimates. So on the right hand side, you had this uh, binomial coefficient from the previous slide. And then you have, you can uh, estimate it from above by the same thing doubled. Okay, now uh, there are three estimates. The first case when uh, G is much uh, bigger than N squared, then when G is of order N squared, and then when G is much less than n squared, but still with this property here. Basically, we have this sharp order estimates for the logarithm. And yes, I would like to prove the first part, which is very difficult <laughs> estimate, which works here. Okay, how do you do this? Just a few minutes ago, we were disconstructing these lower sets, and let us now constructed from the beginning. So how do you do it? You have n cubes, you have to put them somehow. So first of all, uh, you have no option. You have to put the first cube as the origin. Okay. But now you have still n minus one cubes. And let me do the following. I will choose any number, chain, from one to n minus one. And then I will put j cubes along the x. So some here, here, here. Um, okay, how many ways I have to do this? I have d x and j cubes to put. So it's the, the binomial coefficient d minus one plus j choose d minus one. Okay, now I cannot put any cube more along the x. So this is prohibited now. What does it mean? Any cube now must have at least two non-zero coordinates. It means that it must lean on some two previous cubes, right? Okay. Any two cubes, they cannot generate more than one place to put another one. And what does it mean? I have just j cubes here. And I have to choose two to put any one. So at most, I have this number of possibilities, like j choose two. Okay, the next step, I already have j plus one cubes and the number of 
two ways to put a new one is that most this one and so on and so forth. I come to this thing. So the maximum uh the maximum number of ways to construct a new over set is to sum this over all j. And uh, okay, let's denote this quantity here by aj. And then if d is very big, you can say that the every next aj is at least twice the previous one. And it means that I can estimate the, the whole thing by twice the, the last guy. So it, it makes a lot of sense because if you have too many axes, then it's worth putting cubes along them and not one into another, right? So that, that's the, the very rough thing. But if you want to obtain other estimates, you will have, you will have to do uh, in a more, more delicate way. So you have to create your steps differently. So, okay. First of all, you put this one cube at the origin. But then I will put just the cubes, which has the form 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So I, I will choose the axis, which will stay in my game, and the other axis, they will not participate anymore, OK? So for example, I choose this one and this one. And, and the next step, I will put all the cubes of the form, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, okay. So those are the cubes with the sum of coordinates equals 2. And each step will be just putting the cubes with the sum of xi being k. And then you can see that each cube from this set must lean on the cubes with the, the sum of coordinates equals k minus one. Okay? And this gives you, I mean, you can carefully estimate this. And if you have like sk cubes, so you don't have to read this. If you have sk cubes on the k step, you can estimate that the number of places to put new cubes that most this one so the number of cubes from the previous uh from the previous step squared over two and to, to choose then sk uh cubes you have this binomial equation the minus one squared sk and now you have to multiply all of them and uh, so p of m will be the sum of these guys here and then the, the problem becomes just purely analytical and then you have to analyze this quantity but yeah yeah actually that's all i wanted to say thank you very much <laughs> This female, does anyone have uh, questions or comments? I have one question. Uh, in the in some step you mentioned that uh, if if the uh, cube is av available mm -hmm. in the sub uh, in the subset, uh, can it be also available in the cube like in the in the original set? Uh, like uh, when you when you consider n k minus n k minus one, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you use this fact like you cannot remove from the lower uh, set, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking there might be some cubes in the corner, like in available cubes that that are available in both. Like uh, no, it's it's, it's possible, possible because of their orders, mm -hmm. so they are like. Mm, for example, in each of them, so if I have here a cube 
which appears also here, it cannot be available. Yeah, that's true. But uh, if you just uh, remove the one available queue from this, you get a sub like subset. You if you want to say that if you remove this one. Yes. No, that but but uh, the definition of available queue is that you just remove this one, okay. and then it's available. But if you remove, um, if you have to remove another one in order to remove yours, it's that yeah. It's what available. I'm talking about is not that one, but the the other available cubes. Uh, for example, the one on the lower corner. This one. Yeah, this is available in both cases, right? Yes. And uh, how did you count that that uh, available cubes in n k and n k minus one? So I have here n one. Yeah, and zero, okay. it's just four, right? And three is, oh, and one is three. So I can just remove the cube, which is here, but not here. And the number of such cubes is, and zero minus in one, so here is just one. But all these cubes have to stay because I have something leaning on them. So this is just the cubes which appear here, but not here. And the number of them is exactly the difference. Okay. Thank you. You have other questions? Yeah. You're talking about that part where she used an estimate of a minimum of two numbers. Yeah. Why not? Uh, I think it's good. Yeah. It comes from. The Can you comment a little bit on this uh, generating function stuff, uh, Christine? Yeah. Okay. Beginning. So, what was the conjecture for the generating function of uh, E4? Is it. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you have. Why it actually doesn't work? Why it doesn't work? Well, I mean, in a sense, like, uh, what's the best? Uh, since it doesn't work, do you have any kind of new conjectures about what the what generating function could be? So the the, the, the first case was <clears throat> this one, right? Yeah. So I had product here one minus k, and here I had minus one. Yes. So in the second case, you had minus k. So the conjecture was so this is uh, like two dimensional k. This is three dimensional thing. And here we have the, the power, which is the binomial coefficient, right? And k zero. Uh -huh. So here you have k one. So the, the conjecture was that you have k z minus minus two. Something like this. But then it took a long time to, to understand that it's not the right thing. So there are a lot of numerics and uh, I mean, no intuition for me at least. How do you prove and that? There's no conjecture just for the case four, for the next case, which is unknown. Of, uh, I don't think so. Possible generating function. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Thing. So there are people who just they, they do this numerics and it's not, not so easy. Yeah. This gets complicated very fast, right? The numbers get big very fast. Yeah, yeah. And there, there are tables. I mean you, you can find some uh tables for quite huge numbers like in six dimensions. But <laughs> I mean that doesn't give you a clue how to think of it. This formula of RDM Ramanujan is very nice. Okay, more questions? Well, if not, let's thank you, Christine, again for the thank nice you. talk. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Stop the recording. Thank you.